Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple with ilopathology.com. This is the part 3 of testicular tumor series and in this session, let's learn a very important malignancy that is embryonal carcinoma. In the next 5 to 6 minutes, we will look into the epidemiology, the clinical features, morphology and treatment of embryonal carcinoma of testis. So, if you recollect, in the earlier sessions, we had discussed in detail about the classification of testicular tumors. Particularly, we looked into the germ cell tumors. We have covered seminoma, which is the tumor derived from germ cell neoplasia in situ. And now, we will move on to non-seminomatous germ cell tumor. There are different non-seminomatous germ cell tumors, including embryonal carcinoma, yolk sac tumor, which is post-pubertal type, teratoma, which is post-pubertal type again, and then we have trophoblastic tumors like choriocarcinoma, placental site trophoblastic tumor, epithelioid trophoblastic tumor, and cystic trophoblastic tumor. So, in this session, let's learn about embryonal carcinoma. So, embryonal carcinoma is a malignant germ cell tumor which is composed of primitive cells which are large and pleomorphic epithelioid cells. And because it resembles the early stages of embryonic development, hence the name embryonal carcinoma, which means it has all the properties of undifferentiated cells similar to those which are found in embryo. Yeah, that's the reason why the name embryonal carcinoma. This is the second most common germ cell tumor of testis of, after seminoma, which is the most common germ cell tumor. We have studied about that, right? Around 4 to 16 percent of cases are pure embryonal carcinoma. When I say pure embryonal carcinoma, the entire tumor is composed of embryonal carcinoma itself. But we should know that germ cell tumor often, you know, has multiple components and that's when it is called as mixed germ cell tumor. And when you have a mixed germ cell tumor and this embryonal carcinoma is the most common or the predominant component of that mixed germ cell tumor. In more than 80% of cases, the average age of presentation is around 15 to 34 year olds. Peak incidence is at 30 years of age. Clinically, just like seminoma, it is a self-identified mass. It is associated with pain and discomfort in the testis, groin or in the lower abdomen. As compared to that of seminoma, embryonal carcinomas you know, have pain as a predominant presentation of the manifestation. Seminoma usually painless scrotal swellings, whereas embryonal carcinomas they present with pain as a common manifestation. So once you understand, uh, once you clinically suspect that this could be a malignant tumor in these patients, or you know, you're dealing with a testicular tumor, they are often subjected for tumor markers. But in case of embryonal carcinoma, the study of tumor markers is of limited use there is often elevation of alpha beta protein and beta hcg and once you have these elevations which are multiple you know markers then you need to consider that this could be a mixed germ cell tumor where these elevations are because of the other component rather than the embryonal carcinoma component macroscopically these are solid tumors they are locally aggressive and infiltrative tumors and they can infiltrate locally, macroscopically itself. You can identify that they can infiltrate into the adjacent epididymis or into the spermatic cord as well. Okay. And on cut surface, they are, you know, they show variegated appearance. You know, even varying, you know, cut surface, which means they can have solid areas, solid, you know, white, gray white to gray tan areas. They can have cystic areas like that. You can have necrotic areas. You can have hemorrhagic areas. All these areas are seen in case of cut section of the uh, embryonal carcinomas. Microscopically, as soon as you put the micro, you know, slide under the microscope, the pattern what you observe is of three different patterns. Could be of three different patterns. The most common pattern is that of the solid pattern. It accounts around more than 60% of cases of embryonal carcinoma, they show solid growth pattern when they have heats of tumor cells. The next common pattern is the glandular pattern, which accounts to around 17% of cases. So, if you can find these tumor cells are arranged in ill-formed glands. 
and the next most common pattern is the papillary pattern accounting to around 11 percent of cases you find tumor cells are arranged in the form of papillae with central fibrovascular core the most important characteristic feature of embryonal carcinoma is the cell type that's very very diagnostic they are large pleomorphic epithelioid cells they look like an epithelial cells which contains vesicular nuclei and a very prominent nucleoli and often they are referred to as macronuclear nucleoli there can be one or two macronucleoli look at this so this is the nucleus and that's a macronucleoli you can often see abnormal mitosis and the cytoplasm is neither pink nor blue it is ampophilic cytoplasm so this is a very characteristic feature of embryonal carcinoma large Leomorphic epithelioid cells, prominent nucleoli or macronucleoli. And then stroma is composed of spindle shaped cells and the background is collagen rich. Sometimes even these spindle shaped cells show atypia along with mitosis and then that kind of stroma if it is there it is called as neoplastic stromal component so that means stromal component can be neoplastic stromal component or even non-neoplastic where it's just a bland spindle shaped cells immunohistochemistry they often express membrane positivity of cd30 can be nuclear positive for oc3 or 4 and it can also show positivity for sal4 and ae1 or ae3 now, once you diagnose it as embryonal carcinoma, how do you treat this? But before treatment, we need to understand the, the predictive factors of high stage you know, and progression is the presence of lymphovascular invasion. Okay, The tumor cells invading into the lymphatics as well as blood vessels. And of course, it also involves the percentage of embryonal carcinoma. If the percentage of embryonal carcinoma is more than 50 or 60 percent, that means this is predictive of high stage of embryonal carcinoma okay you see these two are the important predictive factors and once you diagnose embryonal carcinoma the treatment is usually orchidectomy along with adjuvant chemotherapy so that completes a very short topic on testicular uh, important testicular tumor that's embryonal carcinoma which we saw that it is a second most common germ cell tumor after seminoma Thank you for watching. If you have liked this video, hit the like button. Do comment if you have any queries to ask and you can as well add comments as to what kind of topics which I should be covering. Of course, I will have to cover lots of other topics like in CVS, which I'll be, you know, looking up in the near future. If you feel this video useful, please do consider subscribing and also don't forget to share among friends. Bye-bye.